Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dvorak's most embarrassing work. Oh, he had, actually, he had a couple. Dvorak, you know, was one of those composers who, who wrote himself to mastery. In other words, he started writing and he wrote and he wrote. I, I think that's really the way to do it, frankly. I mean, some people, you know, like Brahms, like destroy 10 times more music than they actually published. Others, others allow us to hear how they evolved as a composer. And Dvorak was one of those guys. He started as a, a sort of, you know, wild-eyed Wagnerian, and then he became more classically oriented and turned into something similar to Brahms. You can't say Brahmsian because he was doing Brahms before Brahms was doing Brahms. But but they had that similarity. He wanted to excel at classical forms because he had that real desire to to master that kind of syntax, the syntax of you know, dramatic sonata style. And he did, he did all those things. And he wanted to be an opera composer and he wanted to do, and he did everything. And eventually he did it all superbly, but he had to find his way. And along the way, there were a few stumbles. Strangely enough, his most embarrassing piece is not an early work particularly. It's from his maturity, but something just wasn't functioning. The elevator wasn't going to the top top floor when he wrote his overture to his opera Dimitri. The overture to Dimitri is one of the worst things ever to come out of the, the pen of a great composer. I don't know how it happened. And I never would have heard it, but for the fact that Naxos, bless them, did a disc of Dvorak's like complete published orchestral works and did all of these overtures, especially opera overtures. Dvorak was a very good opera composer. He really was. There are several masterpieces um, among his operas, including the Jacobin and and the the Foolish Peasants, also known as the Pig-Headed Peasants, Stubborn Lovers, whatever you want to call it. It's marvelous. And, and, and let's see, what else? There's the uh, Kate and the Devil, which is, or The Devil and Kate, which is just marvelous, funny comic opera, as wonderful as any comic opera written in the 19th century. Of course, Rosalka has finally edged itself into the repertoire. His last opera, Armida, is full of beautiful things. Even, uh, you know, he, he really, even his early dramatic opera, whatever it was called, it was so great, I can't even remember what it was called, um, is really, really good. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of really good stuff that we don't know. Um, they're known in Czechoslovakia or, or Czechia at this point, in Slovakia, however you want to do it. But they're not known in the rest of the world because it, it, it's ever since, like, Beethoven blew, you know, blew it with Fidelio, um, composers are supposed to be either opera specialists or symphonic music specialists. You're supposed to be either Wagner or Brahms, particularly in the German lands, and a composer who could do both equally well. Well, no one did both equally well since Mozart. And Dvorak was that kind of a composer, like Mozart. He could do both equally well. And Dimitri, the piece we're talking about, is actually a fabulous opera, but it's Dvorak's Don Carlos. Um, in, in the sense that he had the same issues that Verdi had with Don Carlos, banging it into shape. You know, he wrote a new act, he revised it. There's there's all kinds of issues with having a a worthwhile performing edition. Fortunately, there's a marvelous recording on Superfund that's absolutely first class. So, um, you know, which uses his revised fourth act and some other stuff. It's, it's a compilation. But the original Dimitri had this ridiculous overture big, long overture. Dvorak was under the impression, I think, maybe from, you know, taking the wrong the wrong advice from Beethoven's experience, that it's a big, long work, so it needs a big, long overture. So he wrote this, like, 13-minute long behemoth of an overture, um, and it goes absolutely nowhere. Oh, my God, it's just full of uninteresting music that meanders about shapelessly, and then adding insult to injury. I mean, at the most, at the crucial moment, it suddenly gathers itself to come up to this big climax in a sort of cadence theme at the end of what purports to be, after like six or seven minutes, the exposition. I don't know what it is. It has no form whatsoever. 
um, it, it comes to this cadence theme, which is a totally embarrassingly shameless ripoff of the the dance tune from Mendelssohn's Overture to A Midsummer Night's Dream. You know what I mean? It goes bom 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 da 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 Right? You know that from A Midsummer Night's Dream? Well, Dvorak steals it. He steals it so flagrantly. It's so obvious. It is so unbelievably transparently an attempt to change a couple things so it doesn't sound like it's like a total quotation, but it does anyway. And and after listening to this thing that's gone nowhere, and that you sh you wind up with that as an overture to this, because Dimitri, let me explain to you, Dimitri is actually the sequel to Boris Godunov. It has all this. <coughs> excuse me. It has all the same characters that Masorti's opera has. It's just what happened. <coughs> oh my heavens! You see, I'm getting so so incensed about this. It's like clogging me up. Anyway, um, it's what happens to Dimitri the Pretender, the guy who takes the throne, the false Dimitri, after Boris dies. And it deals with what happens to Dimitri, who is a nice guy who does his best and winds up getting stabbed by Shusky, remember, the boyar? And, and uh, it also has, you know, Boris's kids, who are growing up and terrible things happen to them. I mean, it's 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 really you know, there's what Fyodor, one of the the younger one, and then there's 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 his daughter who gets killed. And, oh my God, it's just it's great, it's absolutely great. And you've got you know the evil Polish you know, Marina, or whatever her name is, Michnik or Munchnik or Munchkin or whatever her name is. So it's it's all the same characters from Boris Gudunov, and it's a wonderful Slavic slash. Italian opera Verdi style sort of verismo. I, it's 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 really terrific. It's got fabulous music and wonderful arias and terrific situations and gorgeous crowd scenes with wonderful choruses and oh my goodness, it's big and it's long. The last thing it needed was a thirteen minute overture, and really the last thing it needed was a thirteen minute overture, based on Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream. I mean that made no sense whatsoever. And I only discovered, like I said, I only discovered this piece because I, well, I was writing a book on Dvorak and I had to listen to all the stuff I hadn't listened to. And thank God, labels like Naxos record all this stuff. Some of it's good, some of it isn't. And there were some wonderful discoveries. Wonderful discoveries. There's something called Rhapsody, which is Dvorak's first symphonic poem that's also full of reminiscences, reminiscences. In this case of Wagner's Tannhäuser and other things, but that quotes other things from other works of Dvorak. And those were great. They were fun. They're just, there's tons of good stuff that we don't know about. Um, the Overture to Alfred, his first opera, which is a total Wagner ripoff. Some of these things are, they're, they're charming. They're fun to do. You could feel a young composer, you know, finding his way. And, and paying homage to the things that he loved and that, that inspired him. And, you know, and all of that's fine. It really is, especially when you have as much talent as Dvorak did and, and the gift of writing unbelievable tunes and all that stuff. It's wonderful. But this overture to Dimitri is a total piece of, 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 of crap. <laughs> I hate to say it. And it's embarrassing. It's incredibly embarrassing. It's quite... Um, I think says a lot about it, that Dvorak never seems to have mentioned it or attempted to revive it or ever perform it or have anything to do with it after he wrote it and then revised the opera and and tossed the overture and just started the little prelude and the opera starts, which is really always a good thing when you're dealing with these big, long, huge operas. You want to just get right into it. Get moving with the story because there's a lot of story and a lot of stuff to come. It doesn't need all this preludial noodling around. So if you want to hear truly embarrassing music, listen to Dvorak's Overture to Dimitri. It will, it will make you ashamed, ashamed that he ever could have penned such a monstrosity. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.